Have you guys seen my moonlight? It's so cool. Oh my gosh, I can play with this all day. Hi friends, welcome back. Today I have a very exciting video for you because I am finally ready to review the Bridgerton box by Once Upon a Book Club. This was such an amazing box. Not only did it come with three special edition books, it also came with loads of gifts and I really wanna share them with you guys. And if you like this kind of content, then don't forget to click that subscribe button. It really helps and hit that bell so you never miss another video of me again. Let's get unboxing. For those of you that do not know Once Upon a Book Club, go check them out. I'll leave their link in my description. I'm also a VIP for them. That means that I have a discount code for you guys, Leanda Books 10 to get 10% off your first purchase. And this works for everything, for their subscription boxes and also for their web shop. And they also have these kind of boxes. They're extra special edition boxes. The basic principle of Once Upon a Book Club is that they choose a book for you each month. You can choose between young adults and adults. You read the book, come across post-its, and these post-its correspond to gifts in your box, which is such a fun concept. And for the Bridgerton box, they included three books. So the first three books of the Bridgerton family by Julia Quinn, and they've included gifts for each book. And as you can tell by the size of this gigantic box, <laughs> there were quite a lot of gifts. As always, I have read the books that came in the box. And in this case, it is The Duke and I, The Viscount Who Loves Me, and An Offer from a Gentleman by Julia Quinn. And each book follows one of the Bridgerton family members, specifically the children. There are eight children, so eight books. Let's start with The Duke and I. I will give you guys a quick book review and then open the corresponding gifts. But before I do, a big thank you to my patrons. You guys really helped me out. I appreciate you so, so much. And if you feel like it is something for you, then definitely come join us. It's really fun over there. Just head over to patreon.com, type in my name, or click on the link in my description. Quick question for you guys. Do I need to watch the show? Because I didn't. I just read the books. Is it worth it? Or should I just stick to the books? In 1813, the romantic games consist of curtsies, ballrooms, and marriage. The Duke of Hastings intends to shun marriage, but then he meets Daphne Bridgerton. Together they have to navigate through the gossipy and merciless world of London's elite. Let me start by saying that I'm not necessarily a romance reader, so I was very curious to see what I thought of these books. All of the books are about Regal London, which is a time period that I really like to read about or see in a show. And Julia Quinn's writing style, because I've never read another book from her before, is just really descriptive, which makes it funny and also pulls you in. In this book, I really, really liked the chemistry between Simon, the Duke, and Daphne. There's also a lot of banter between them uh, and also between the family because the family dynamics are awesome in this book. I also really liked Simon's background story, so his vulnerability. You'll get it if you've read the book. And there were some entertaining twists and turns which made the reading experience enjoyable. What I didn't like is that sexism and misogyny was exaggerated. I think that's partly because of Julia Quinn's writing style. I don't think it's her intention to do so, but her writing style is just really descriptive, sometimes quite extreme just to make a point. Another thing that I noticed about Julia Quinn's writing style is that there's a very good beginning, a very good end, but then the middle part drags a bit. I think that's because there's not much room for mystery. We already know what's going to happen. They're gonna fall in love with each other. So then the middle is just these trials and tribulations to get to being a couple. And I think I could have done without like two or three chapters in the middle because they didn't really add anything to the relationship or the family dynamics. Overall, I really enjoyed this. I loved reading about Daphne and Simon. I think they are my favorite couple so far. And because these are special editions, you get a second epilogue, which comes from a novella that Julia Quinn 
wrote later on and I needed that because I really wanted to read more about them. In the end, I gave this book four stars. Let's take a look at the gifts for the Duke and I. So the first one is on page 120. There is a post-it and that way you know that you have to open your gift. This is a part where Simon the Duke visits uh, Daphne's house where her mother Violet is as well. You're truly an exceptional hostess, Simon said, holding out the flowers. Here, these are for you. For me? Violet's mouth fell open in surprise and a strange little breathy sound escaped her lips. Are you certain? Because I... She looked over at Daphne and then at Simon and then finally back at her daughter. Are you certain? Absolutely. Violet blinked rapidly and Daphne noticed that there were actually tears in her mother's eyes. No one ever gave her flowers, she realized, at least not since her father had died 10 years earlier. Fun fact, this is actually something that happened to the author. I believe her husband now uh, did this for her mother and also her grandmother, I believe. So she felt that this was a very special moment that she wanted to incorporate in the book. And she was actually really sad when she found out they didn't put it in the TV show. So what could this be? Ta-da! How cute is that? Obviously these are fake because they wouldn't last that long in a box, but they look really good. I could actually put this on my table and I don't think that anyone would notice that these are fake tulips. And there's even a ribbon that has some words on it and I can only guess that these are sentences from the book. So yeah, we got flowers. The next posted is a part where Daphne and Simon have this moment together and he gives her a jewelry box and there's a beautiful diamond ring inside of it. It was the most beautiful piece of jewelry Daphne had ever seen. Brilliant but elegant. Obviously precious but not overly showy. The corresponding gift is this beautiful pink box with a ribbon. When I saw this I was like is there a ring inside? Is it for me? This just feels really romantic doesn't it? And when you remove the ribbon and open the box there is a beautiful, if I say so myself, beautiful ring inside. I'm gonna assume that this is fake uh, because I've had jewelry from Once Upon a Book Club and usually when I wear it when it's really hot then my skin gets green so that's kind of a sign that it's really really fake <laughs> but nonetheless it looks really good and it's just one size fits all so if you're one of the lucky ones it will fit on your ring finger and the final gift for the duke and i can be found at the very last page and this part is about lady whistledowns she is um someone who writes for the society paper so she's kind of the gossip girl of regal london and nobody knows who she is and her identity isn't revealed until I think the fourth or fifth book. But at the end of the story, she is in a small, elegantly furnished chamber, not so very far from Hastings' house. A young woman sat at her desk with a quill and a pot of ink and pulled out a nice piece of paper. That's what I liked in every book, by the way. I didn't even mention that, but I really like Lady Whistledown's character and the fact that she introduces each of the Bridgerton by her gossip. Corresponding gift comes in this green box with leaves all over it. And I really like this gift. I think it's one of my favorites overall because inside is a freaking quill. It's so beautiful. I mean, you guys, it's this purple feather with white words on it. There's an oak leaf and we even have a bottle of ink that says the property of Lady Whistledown. I would love to write letters with a quill. I think they will look horrendous, but it's the experience that counts. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, love this. Love this gift. Let's move on to the second book. The year is 1814 and there are rumors that Lord Anthony Bridgerton wants to get married. He sees an eligible candidate in Edwina Sheffield. However, Edwina does nothing without the approval of her older sister Kate. And this Miss Sheffield does not like Anthony and thinks he's a horrible rake. Or does she? I don't know if you guys know this, but the Bridgerton children are alphabetically named. So Daphne is actually the fourth child. And then we have Anthony, Benedict. What's the C? I want to say Charles, but that's just a guess. <laughs> no, it's not Charles. All right, Colin, Gregory, 
Anne, four daughters, Daphne, Eloise, Francesca, and Hyacinth. And in The Viscount Who Loves Me, we follow Anthony, who is the eldest son of the Bridgerton family. What I liked about this book is, again, the chemistry, because that's what it's all about. Basically, in these books, it's about the relationship development, the chemistry between the two people that are in the relationship. So that's what I really, really liked. It was also really interesting to read Anthony's background story, how he grew up without a father for a major part of his life and how that affected his personality and his fears. In this book, there are also other characters that you get to know and I really cared for them. And as I said in the beginning of this video, the writing style, because that just pulls you in. And I think particularly in the second book, it is done really well. There were also some things that I didn't like in this book. First up is Anthony's behavior. It was really self-centered and macho at times. But I mean, that's, that's part of a book, I guess. You like a character or you don't like him, you have a certain an opinion about them that only means that you care for them and that you're interested enough in the story to feel a certain way about them this was also a problem for me in the first book some scenes and sentences are exaggerated to make a point and again it could have been less pages in the end i pretty much like this book as much as i like the first one the duke and i so i also gave this one four stars now let's move on to the gifts so in this scene we follow anthony and kate they cannot stand each other and somehow they ended up in the same room. The door is locked and Anthony just threw the key on the ground. Kate remained motionless for far longer than he would have thought, obviously loath to kneel before him, even if it was to gather up the key that would provide her with the escapes he so obviously desired. The corresponding gift comes in this little bag and this is a beautiful old key. I'm a sucker for these kind of items. I basically like anything that looks old, bookish and magical. So an old key with a beautiful lace ribbon fits in that category. And I can really imagine someone picking this key up and putting it in one of the old locks in the Bridgerton house. The next post-it is in a scene where we find Kate and Anthony having tea together. That's basically what happens. Here you are, C murmured, holding out his tea. Be careful, it's hot. I've never been one for lukewarm tea. No, he thought with a smile, C wouldn't be. Kate wasn't the sort to do anything in half measures. It was one of the things he liked best about her. And then it just goes on about them having tea together. And the corresponding gift is this box. And you can probably already guess what this is. And this is another one of my favorites. So inside the box, oh my gosh, is a cup and saucer. It's so pretty, you guys. It's so pretty. I'm still blown away by it. I just love the fact that it's light blue. It has this beautiful golden edge. And then the same pattern is on the cup as well. And inside there are flowers. And there's even a quote on the cup. Ah, gentle reader, the author is pleased to report. And could this be a coincidence? Because the final post-it can be found on page 342 is again about tea. Is there enough tea left for me to have another cup? He asked as nonchalantly as he could imagine. If there isn't, I'm sure I could have cook brew another pot. Oh no, I'm sure that won't be necessary, he exclaimed, probably a little too loudly. I'll just take whatever is left. This is a really funny scene, by the way. And the corresponding gift, who would have guessed? It's tea. So if you're not a tea drinker, this gift will probably disappoint you, but I am. So I'm really happy that they included this. Breakfast in Paris, ginger peach, and double bergamot Earl Grey. Then the third and final book, an offer from a gentleman. In this Cinderella retelling, we follow Sophie Beckett, a daughter of an Earl forced to work as a servant for her stepmother. One night, she sneaks out of the house to attend the masquerade ball. She meets her Prince Charming in the form of handsome Benedict Bridgerton. It's love at first sight, 
but Sophie has to get back before the clock strikes midnight. Without revealing who she is, she leaves the ball, leaving Benedict to wonder who this extraordinary woman was. What I liked about this book is that it is a Cinderella retelling, so that's something that I haven't seen in a while. I mean, there are other books with Cinderella retellings, but I just haven't read them recently, so this was my first one in a while, and I enjoyed that. Like, she has to fight. She has to fight for her place in the world, and I really like that aspect of it. Also, you guys, Benedict's mom is awesome. She didn't really play a big part in the previous books, but she does play kind of a big part in this one. And I really like the awkward, and I have to emphasize awkward, sexual tension in this book between Sophie and Benedict. What I did like is the behavior of Benedict. He is pretty much self-centered and very manipulative. And what I really missed in this book is the lack of relationship development, which was very strong in the first two books, but I just, I didn't really feel it in this one. There wasn't enough buildup and that made it dull at times. So that's why I gave this book a three and a half stars. And that's funny because I've read other people's reviews on Goodreads and a lot of them say that this is their favorite one, but I might have to say that this was my least favorite one of the first three books. And now for the final three gifts. So in this part, we follow Sophie who is in Benedict's room because she had to take care of him and she is just looking around his room and she found his sketchbook. With a sigh, Sophie flipped through a few more pages until she reached the end of the book. The very last sketch was different from the rest, if only because it appeared to be of a night scene and the woman in it was holding her skirts above her ankles as she ran across. Good God, Sophie gasped, thunderstruck. It was her. I mean, above her ankles. Oh my gosh, how times have changed. <laughs> so the corresponding gift comes in this box. And in my opinion, this was another really good gift because we got an actual sketchbook. It has this beautiful imprint on it. You can open it right here. There's even a place to fit your pen. And oh, I didn't even see this. There are actual sketches inside. How cool is that? Oh, that's the Bridgertons playing their annual game. And there's Sophie at the masquerade ball. You know what's funny though? I recognize this design. We got this gift before. It just looks a little bit different now. I don't remember for what box or what book it was but I do still have it because I use it for my work. In this next part, there is some uh, attention seeking going on from Benedict to Sophie. Your book is upside down, he pointed out. Sophie gasped and looked down. It is not, but you still had to look to be sure, didn't you? She stood up and announced, I'm going inside. And this gift refers to the fact that she is reading. Does it look familiar? It is actually the fourth book in the series, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. How awesome is that? He made her more confident, more daring. He made her more herself, or at least the herself she wished she could be. So another book to add to my TBR. And then the final gift. This is a part in which Benedict confronts Sophie with the fact that she has lied about the masquerade ball. I fell in love with you two years ago and it didn't seem pertinent. Can I please remove the scarf? She whispered. So she's wearing a scarf because they were playing a game of tag with the children. You can remain blind. Benedict, I, like I was blind this past month. Yeah, it gets heated. The corresponding and final gift comes in this bag and inside is something very soft. It is a scarf. It has a really feminine and romantic design. It's pink and it has these white gray flowers all over it. I don't wear scarves. I really don't, do I? I always say that I want to, but I, I never do. So this is probably not the best gift for me, although I do really love how it looks. So I might just use it as a background for Instagram photos or to decorate my house with. I don't know yet, but I do really like it. We are not done yet because next to these four beautiful books and all the gifts 
Once Upon a Book Club also includes some extras. First up is this little pink pout and inside is a card that says Bridgerton Glove Story Challenge. This was something I did not participate in but it says use everyday items around your home to recreate the photo on the front of this card. And then inside and this is really like a bonus gift are beautiful gloves. Then there's also a beautiful bookmark with a golden tassel, a quote card that says, he grabbed her hand and pulled her body against his. I burn for you, he said, touching his lips to her ear. And then finally, the Once Upon a Book Club kit, and this time they made it look like Lady Whistledown Society Paper, which is so awesome. And inside, a conversation with the author. And that's everything. Oh my gosh, this took me such a long time to film you guys. I really, really enjoyed it. This was such a great box, such a great purchase. I cannot wait for the second box because I'm pretty sure they're gonna include the next four books and complete the entire series. So you bet I'm gonna buy that one as well. I'm not even sure if I can choose a favorite. I have multiple favorites in this box. I think my all-time favorite of this box is the quill because it is just so unique. You cannot buy this anywhere else and it represents Lady Whistledown. I pretty much loved it all. This is what Once Upon a Book Club does best and although I really enjoy their monthly boxes, this was next level. And that was it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and let's stay in touch.